good morning or afternoon or evening or perhaps even the middle of the night whatever time you are joining us welcome to worship with trinity saint james i'm pastor jamie glenn burns my pronouns are she and her and whoever you are however you come whether that's strong or weak weary or rested anxious or bold alone or over peopled, broken or healed, however you come, God welcomes you with open arms and we are glad that you're joining us. This is a time of incredible challenge for all of us. As the COVID-19 cases are rising in our community, we know that the virus has touched all our lives, including those of us here leading worship. We are trying to adapt to changing situations in the best way that we can. And now is a time when maybe it's more important than ever to remember what has become an affirmation for a faith for us at Trinity St. James, that God truly is good all the time and all the time God is good. And when we gather, we remind each other of that. We remember that even when it's hard, even when nothing is going as hoped, even when our plans are disrupted. You all know something about that and you may be noticing something about that. If you look at the screen and the setting of this worship, we are not in our sanctuary today uh, to protect members of the worship team, their contacts and the public health, the larger community. We are leading worship from our respective places in and no contact. So I am recording this from home and a huge shout out and thank you to Dave Sundberg, who is our technology guy and being able to make this happen on some very short notice. So I invite you to take a few moments, settle in, take a few deep breaths and let the music of our pianist Betty Debbin draw you toward God. invite you now to join in singing our gathering hymn or to listen if you wish with our thanks to soloist Christy Sundberg and pianist Marilyn Lodge for providing this. Oh, 
beginning, God has been relentlessly pursuing us in love. Though our faithfulness ebbs and flows, God's love endures forever. Taking on flesh like ours, God became one with humanity in the person of Jesus Christ. God lived and moved and ministered in the margins of power. God incarnate was not what we expected. We did not recognize God in Jesus. Still, we struggle to recognize God with us. And yet, God continues to dwell in our midst. Thanks be to God. As we gather with those beautiful words from colleagues at enfleshed.com who prepared the liturgy for this service, I invite you now to listen to a special message for the children by Chuck Schmidt and his friend Buddy. Well, Buddy, it's Sunday morning again. That's a beautiful day out for November. And buddy, can you, do you know what this is, buddy? This is a three and a half inch floppy disk. You know, that was high tech when I was, when I was char little Charlie's age in school. You know, it's the same as it was in, when I was in school and Charlie is in, which same as it was with Charlie and the same as when Jamie and Dave were in school was. Besides the homework, that's something that, there will always be homework. When you're in school, buddy, you start on a train. And the train, you meet all different kinds of people when you start on that train. Some get on, they're right next to you. Some of them sit clear back in the back. And if you're lucky, like I've been, you meet some friends who you stay pretty close in the same area of the train with. Like my friend Eric, he and I met in third grade, and we've been some pretty close ever since. We were close all the way through junior high and all the way through high school and grade school. And then he moved away after college and we became closer a few years ago. When I was in middle school, my friend Darby and I became friends and she and I haven't, we're almost like brother and sister. We're so close. I mean, we've been through everything, her hardships in life, my hardships. And then when I got to college, I met my friend Tony. And Tony and I hit it off. He and I just had one of those bonds, but something happened when we were in college that was hard for him. He lost his dad to cancer. And I was there when he, when he was going through it. I helped him get through it. And he kept thanking me for doing it. Never did I realize that years later, I'd be the one needing him. And well, in 2012, my dad passed away from cancer. And my wife, Jackie, could not, whatever she did, she could not help me. She knew I needed help. But she heard me talk about Tony losing his dad when we were in college. So she contacted Tony. Tony came back. He was teaching in South Carolina at the time. He came back, and we spent a few days together helping me deal with what he'd already been through. When he left, it made me realize that, you know, that certain things in this life are important. Friends and family are important. And I'm then my friend Steve, who I mentioned last week, who got me thinking that, you know, he and I are more like brothers. But, you know, it's one of those things where on the train of life, if you're fortunate, you get on the train with somebody when you're Charlie's age and you ride it till you're Dave's age. And those are the friends that are blessings. Those are the ones that you can have that are there through thick and thin, who, when you have kids, grandkids, whatnot, share the joys and everything. They're also the ones who seem like, in the case with Eric, he's moved a few times, it's, Chuck, can I borrow your truck? Type deal, which is fine. But the more I think about it, is that the friendships we make are a gift from God also. It's God puts people in our lives for certain things he has been giving me the gift of having friends for so many years he has also given me the gift of becoming a member of this congregation years ago a place where 
I feel safe. I feel wanted. I am basically at home. And I know in this time of COVID and craziness 2020, when we're doing this on Zoom and everything, we cannot be as together as much as we want to be. But still, we are together as one family. You know, and, but, and something happened this week when I, a friend of mine, we were talking, and he goes, you know what a true friend is? And I asked him, I said, what? And he goes, a true friend is the person that you can be sweatier than sweaty, put your arms around, totally look gross, put your arms around, say, give them a hug, and they give you one back. But unfortunately, in this time of COVID, we are doing the vert long distance hug. You what? Yeah, I think all of our friends out there need a big long distance hug. That's a good idea. So what I'd like to ask you guys to do, instead of, since we can't hug our friends, hug your family and let them know how important they are. And be thankful that as you build the relationships you have at your age. Because when you become my age, you realize those are what make you wealthy. Money doesn't. But you think we should do a quick prayer? Okay. Dear God, we thank you for the friendships that we've that you allowed us to create for these years. We also thank you for the blessings you've given us. Even though there are times right now it doesn't seem like there are many, but there is. We also ask you to keep us safe as we go through this craziness of another COVID deal. We know that with your help, we will get through it eventually. We also know that with your guidance, things will come out the right way. We just don't know when or how, but we do know it will happen. In your name we pray, amen. What's that, buddy? Okay. This is Buddy saying, giving all of his friends one big long distance hug and thinking of the days when he can get a hug from his friends. Bye. Listen now to these words of scripture read by our liturgist, Christy Sundberg. Our psalm reading is from Psalm 123, verses 1 through 3a. To you I lift up my eyes, O you who are enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he has mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Our scripture reading is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 13. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. What is saving your life now, right now? The preacher and writer Barbara Brown Taylor writes in her book, An Altar in the World, that she was invited to be a guest preacher at a church in Alabama. And she asked the old priest who served there, what do you want me to talk about? And he answered, come tell us what is saving your life right now. So what is saving your life right now? I can't tell you what is saving yours. All I can do is tell you what my life depends on right now and trust that God will help you 
see what is saving yours. And I love that that wise old priest said, right now, because I think that my answer might be different in a different time. It might have been different in different circumstances of my life, but we live in the right now. And what is saving my life right now is all of you. I know, I know the right answer is supposed to be God or maybe Jesus. I have a colleague who would share that when she was teaching confirmation class, her kids learned really early on that anytime she asked them a question and they weren't sure of the answer, the answer was God, or if it wasn't God, it was Jesus. But for me, sometimes those names are a little bit abstract. You may have heard this story, it's been around a while about this little child that was afraid of the dark. And so each night his mother would come and tuck him in and say good night and then she'd turn out the light and prepare to leave. And he was terrified of the dark and so he'd ask her to stay. Well, like most mothers, she reassured the little one, God is with you all night. God is always with you. To which this little boy replied, mom, I need a God with skin on. Sometimes I need a God with skin on. And I think what is saving my life right now is God with skin on. And I think that's what the passage from 1 John reminds us. God is love. We know God when we know love, when we experience it, when we receive it, when we witness it, when we give it. So today, the things that are saving my life right now are loving people who show me a God with skin on. There are many, but these are a few of them, the caregivers. Oh, blessed are the caregivers, the ones who pick up medicines and wipe fevered foreheads and transport people to doctor's appointments. They are the ones that they sit quietly at bedsides when that's what's needed or they work diligently with IVs and ventilators and all kinds of medical equipment when that's what is needed. They deliver soup and ice cream to those in quarantine. They arrange pills, they clean bathrooms. They listen to raspy breathing and moans of pain when it's hard to hear them. They are unsung heroes loving neighbors behind closed doors or through hidden acts of kindness and God's light shines through them. And they are you. As much as I hate being behind a screen like this and I'm staring at this camera lens, but in my mind, I'm imagining the faces of those of you that I have seen in action as caregivers. You inspire me to do a little more than I think I can. You keep before me the beauty of compassion. You save my life. And then there are the teachers, all kinds of teachers. We think in this particular time when the schools have just gone virtual uh, um, full time again in our area of the teachers who are having to adapt and change how they do things to meet new circumstances. I think of the daycare staff who are now being pressed into the role as teachers in a new way. And the parents and grandparents and other relatives, people in the household who are taking on new roles, not only helping teach children how to grow up, but also taking on math, science, history, English. These are the teachers who are putting in that extra effort to comfort kids who are pandemic weary, even as they, as you are pandemic weary yourselves. You're the ones who are 
caring for anxious children, comforting those who are scared and hurting. God's love shines through you. You, you who teach, you challenge me to keep learning. You show me that God provides opportunity even when things around us look dismal because you're making things happen. You're finding new ways. You keep opening doors to learning and you also save my life. I have some real appreciation and a desperate need for people who can make tough decisions. I am not a good decision maker, so I admire those of you who can see what needs to be done and then act boldly and do it. In contrast, if you walked into my house right now, any place besides this carefully prepared little screenshot, you would find sheets of yellow legal paper with to-do lists strewn about you would see piles of fleece blankets because cozy things are a good way to avoid hard decisions, maybe. And then there's the trail of tortilla chip crumbs, the result of my stress eating. But some of you, you take on the challenges. You're the ones who can decisively say, and I have heard you say, our family is not gathering for Thanksgiving because we want to protect each other and the community around us. You are the ones that can take charge when some of us wobble. You are the ones that can make the hard calls and show the tough love of Christ that sometimes we all need. You show me a love that is stronger than I am. You show me a boldness that I never thought possible. You save my life. And then there are the children. Some years ago now, my husband and I hosted in our home, Richard and Marvin, two little boys from Uganda who sang in the Africa Children's Choir. I hadn't really wanted to do this. I wasn't sure what it would be like. I mean, after all, I am the parent only of girls. What do you do with two little boys? But there seemed to be a need and uh, my husband nudged a little bit and Richard and Marvin stayed with us just for a few days. And I am so glad they did. Blessed are the children. Oh my goodness, they bring me life. These two little boys had lived through horrors I can only imagine. And yet they could play for hours, arranging and rearranging the magnet nativity scene on a refrigerator, telling the story of incarnation of Jesus' birth over and over and over. They laughed at our dog. They told stories of their experiences and their travels with the children's choir they brought joy that exceeded any expectations I had. And so often, that's exactly how it is with children. They show me a love that is innocent and fresh and honest and joyful. So kids out there, you also saved my life. I could keep going, the list is long. There are prayers and phoners, people who tend creation, people who take care of pets. There are some of you out there that put roofs on houses and buy thick scarves and mittens for the warm tree and write checks for the food pantry. There are artists and music makers among you who bring joy and who can express the depth of human experience in ways that sometimes mere words cannot capture. These are the ones, you are the ones, and more besides, who nudge me toward greater generosity and faith. You too, you all save my life. We need each other. We need love. We need the love that shows us God with skin on. And I suppose another way to put it is that 
love is what actually saves my life. And love in the abstract, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And maybe that's true for some others as well. That might just be why God sent Jesus, the word made flesh. Or as that little child put it, God with skin on. What's saving my life right now? Well, not to put any pressure on y'all, but you are. Because when I see you, when I see you loving, when I see you generous, when I see you compassionate, I see God with skin on. Because every place I see love, I see God. Because as the scriptures tell us, God is love. And I want to be part of that. I invite you to trust in this God of love and pray with me now again with words shared from enfleshed.com. Let's pray. When so much of our world is groaning with injustice and destruction, we are invited to turn to God and one another. We are not meant to carry the struggles of the world alone. And so in a spirit of collective embrace, we share together in prayer for all that troubles our hearts. God, hear our prayers. For all of the bodies in suffering, deprived of resources, withheld from care, or made into targets of violence, God, hear our prayers. For all whose spirits are in despair, those who are facing loss or grief, those who are isolated or those struggling to accept their own worth. God, hear our prayers. For all of the ways power is wielded over communities and individuals, for those living under oppressive forces, for the temptation towards complicity with injustice, and for the ways the church sometimes uses you, O oh God, as a weapon rather than as a tool for healing and liberation. God, hear our prayers. Just as we are not meant to shoulder the world's pain alone, we are equally invited to delight with one another in the joy that sustains us. For the beauty that grows around us, God, we give you thanks for community and relationships that transform and sustain us. God, we give you thanks. For art and music and stories and truths that foster love and connection. God, we give you thanks. For every source of courage in the face of all that makes us afraid. God, we give you thanks for your presence within and around us in our highs and our lows, our hope and our despair. God, we give you thanks. Hear our prayers and deepen our willingness to show up with and for one another, sharing in each other's burdens and working for one another's protection and care. And now I invite you to pray with me as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite you now to listen, to sing along if you wish to our closing hymn, God be with you till we meet again. That will be followed by a brief benediction and the postlude.
now with these words. Love is a risky endeavor, but we are made capable. Because love lives in us, we can practice solidarity with courage. Because love is alive around us, we can imagine new worlds together. Because love is eternal, we can trust in it, even when we struggle to perceive it. This is the power of God in us. Let us go and live it with faith. Amen.